strong presence of the Lord here today. I think we should just linger here for a minute. You know, whatever you're going through, it's just obvious that the Father is just, He's just with outstretched arms this morning, loving on you. Just close your eyes and embrace him this morning. Whatever you're going through, just release. If you need peace, comfort, if you're going through a struggle, a battle, lay it down. Lay it down before him, he says. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for always being there for us. Every hardship, every trial, Lord, you never leave us nor forsake us. You are Abba Father, the God who cares. And we thank you for that today, Lord, as we give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whew. Just love it when he basks and he lavishes on us. This is what we need to take out there because that's what the world's longing for is this peace, this comfort. I just want to thank you for the privilege and the honor today to come speak to you. Before we get started, the Lord just dropped something in my heart. I want to, I want to pray for Israel. Um, there is a time and a day where the Lord's going to touch them and rescue them, and he's going to deal with them. He's not left them alone, but this unprovoked attack... A lot of people were hurt and lost their lives. So I want to pray that, Lord, I pray like your scripture prays for peace over there, God. I pray that the Prince of Peace would step in, Lord. They've declared war once again. And I ask of you, Father, to just go before them mightily as you have in the past, Lord. These are your elect God, I pray that you help them in their hurting, that you bring comfort and give them strength to get through this, God. Give them grace and give them favor, Lord. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, that was a hard one to see on the news. Oh, what a sweet presence here this morning. Well, as you can tell, I'm not Jason. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you today. Uh, it's just a privilege and an honor. Um, I just, um, I had a message on Father's Day. Uh, and it, I just enjoyed the message that the Lord gave me there about him being a provider, being our source, being our protector, and being our lover. So as I was preparing for what the Lord wanted me to bring today, I was asking him, you know, what's your people need? What do they need to hear? And he said to drill down on being the provider and a source from your Father's Day message. I said, okay. So that's what I'm going to do today. But he threw an interesting twist on it it became from provider source to a whole new thing. All right. It really became, is he your dependence?
if you remember on my Father's Day message, I talked about Abraham when God called him to sacrifice his son Isaac. And he went almost all the way through it. He went right down to the point of taking Isaac's life. And right at that last moment, the Lord said, wait. And he looked over in the brushes and a lamb had got caught in a thicket. And Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh at that time. The Lord my provider. And I also talked about the widow woman and Elisha. How she gave her last drop of oil for the man of God and how God multiplied that out and how he basically gave her a retirement program from that. How he provided for her. And lastly, I talked about the Israelites. How they took a journey into the wilderness. How they had to be transferred from a government supplied life into a kingdom supplied life by God himself. And as a result of that, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7, it says this, And the Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hands. He has watched over you in this journey through this vast desert. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you, and you have lacked nothing. That was with a people under an old covenant. We're under a new and better covenant today. Thank you. So basically today I ask of you, we have the evidence of scripture. It clearly states that God is a provider. So what do we do with that? Now think about this. In our American lifestyle, if we're hungry, what do we do? We simply go to the fridge, the cupboard, we get something out. We've got it. If we're thirsty, we go right to the faucet. If we need medicine, what do we do? We get in our medicine cabinet, go to the hall closet. Carlene's got a drugstore in the closet there. Uh, if we need money, go to the bank machine. It's all right there. Let's put in a few numbers, pops out some money. So what do we do in this culture I say it like this, this highly provisional society that we live in, I don't really believe it so much, is God our provider? But what I want to ask you today, is he your dependency? We have such a highly provisional society that a lot of times it's easier to go pop the pill real quick, to get the money real quick, But I ask you, is he truly our dependency? Hope to take you on a journey today of dependency. As Christians, we've entered into this covenant relationship with God. This covenant, God went to great lengths to restore us back from our state of sinfulness into a relationship back with him. The covenant is not independence. It's an agreement between two parties based upon commitments that they made to each other. 
commitments to fulfill. It's a life commitment till death do you part. It's an abiding commitment and covenant. I want to give you some uh, definitions here. Dependency. Dependency is a situation in which you need something or someone and you're unable to continue normally without them. It's also a state of relying upon a being or being controlled by something or someone else. When I first read that, I got a little check. I was like, oh, I don't, we don't like that word control a lot of times. Think about this. Are we not called to a life of freedom? From what I remember in the scripture, uh, Galatians 5, 13, for you brothers were called to freedom. Dependency means I have to have a state of relying on or being controlled by someone or something. I like the first part of the definition. It's a situation in which you need someone or something or unable to continue that. Also in 1 Corinthians 12, I talked about this in the class this morning, all things are permissible but not everything is beneficial. It's pretty quiet out there today. I want to share a couple testimonies. Sometimes testimonies speak louder than the message themselves. I want to guess it was probably eight or ten years ago, and this is a story of dependency. I had a little growth starting to come on my back and didn't think nothing about it. But as time went on, that growth got bigger and bigger. And then one day when I got out of the shower, I was at this point in time in my walk with the Lord where he was really drilling down on trusting him, operating in kingdom authority, um, calling those things that are not as though they were, declarations, decrees. And I got out of the shower one day, I was drying off, and Carlene seen that growth on my back, and she said, ooh, you better go see the doctor about that. I'm a guy. I usually like, yeah, right, you know. We usually wait for the last minute, unfortunately. But as soon as she walked out of the room, it was just plain as day. The Lord, I looked in the mirror, and it just like he spoke to me right through the mirror and said, are you going to trust me? Do you depend upon me to resolve this? Because I had been in the process of learning about dependency, trusting, authority and things like that and I said okay Lord so you're telling me you don't want me to go to the doctor so I started getting the word out the Lord brought to mind instantly the parable of the fig tree Jesus and them was going from one town to another and there was a fig tree that was out of season and was not producing any fruit. And he spoke to that fig tree and cursed it. And it withered away. That was the instant thing that I got. So I followed that. Scripture says to be imitators of God. So, okay, if it worked for a fig tree, maybe it'll work for this growth on my back. And I proceeded for the next couple months, maybe not every day, but fairly often, I spoke to that growth on my back. And I said, you're not to be here. I curse you. 
I command you to dry up. You're not part of the health that the covenant has given me. I command you to get off of my back, dry up, and I want new growth to come in its place. And I spoke that for a couple months. I didn't see anything. Until one day, now this is what I want to encourage you on. Sometimes you got to walk through these things in dependency. I knew he was there. I knew I had the promises of God. I knew that my words would go forth because they were his words and they were not going to return void. They were going to accomplish the purpose that I sent them for. And then one day, when I got out of the shower, drying myself off, I looked. How many of you ever left like a piece of fruit or something laying out on the counter for a couple, two or three days? How it just kind of shrivels up? That's what happened. I seen that and it was shriveling up. And I'm not kidding, within a couple, two or three days after that, it had just completely shriveled up to almost nothing and it just fell off. And in its place, complete new growth there. That was a dependency and a trust upon his word that he gave me. Now, I'm not get, negating anything to do with doctors because doctors are awesome and they, most of them have our best interests in mind. And we need them. And we're in a country where we're blessed to have these things. But I can tell you this, from being on several mission trips all across the world, most people don't have it as good as we have it. And the only thing that they have is their faith and their trust in the Lord, and their dependency upon Him. Another quick one, I had this drainage ditch in the back of my yard. I've got a detached garage. And I had the surveyors come out. I was going to put a driveway in. The county engineer gave me the size culvert I need to put in there and everything. I put it in. I had rock laid over it and everything, knowing that sometime in the future I was going to asphalt this thing. But I had been noticing as years went by when it would rain heavy, the water would come up over the driveway and it would wash it out. I'm like... It didn't wash it out completely, but it washed it out enough to where I knew that that culvert was not the right size. So here again, I didn't know what to do about it because I'm getting ready to asphalt the driveway. And the Lord just says, go to the county office, talk to the people there, talk to the engineers, and see if they'll put a new culvert in. I'm like, right. <laughs> so I did it. I went right down there on Blue Bluff and talked to the county office. I talked to some lady in there. She basically, I explained the whole situation. And I said, is there anything you can do? She says, well, we'll put in a work order. But she basically didn't give me much hope, you know, when I left there. But I had this trust and dependency upon the Lord that I was starting to grow in. And that was probably like on a Wednesday or Thursday that I went down there. And I'm not kidding you. I came home from work like Tuesday of the next week. And usually when I come home, I always kind of give a glance at the property, you know, just make sure everything's okay. Bam, there was a brand new 24-inch culvert installed in my back driveway. I mean, it's just like the Lord saying, son, I got you here. I got you here. How many of you have ever lost your keys or misplaced something? Whew. I don't know how many times I've done this. Lord, give me a picture. Let me know I'm dependent upon you, God. And sure enough, every single time he shows up, every time. Folks, we got a God that we're in relationship with that wants to be 
so in, in tune with our lives, so a part of our lives that sometimes we don't give him the room to let him be God in our lives. He is our source. He is our provider. That he is. And we should learn to depend upon him in everything that we do. But you know, it goes further than dependency. He wants relationship. I depend upon my wife to do a lot of things in my household. And she depends upon me. There's that mutual trust and agreement. And without each other, it would be burdensome. Think about it. The God who created everything wants to be a participant in everything that you do in your life. I mean, it boggles the mind to sit there and think about. Let me give you some synonyms for dependency. This one will get you. Dependency. Assurance. Belief. Confidence, expectation, faith, hope, responsibility, stability, in stock, trust, interdependency, steadfastness, and trustworthiness. Wow. In fact, the Lord, I was in a job to where I had to go out and troubleshoot stuff. I didn't know what the problems were. A lot of times I had to go out there and pray in tongues, just trusting that he was going to drop something in my spirit to resolve this. He knows what the problems are. I was drawing from my source, my heavenly father. He promised never to leave me nor forsake me. He always promised to have the answer. May not be the way I want to hear it. But I've come to this point to where in my life, one of my life verses, because of dependency, has, has become Proverbs 3 and 5. How many know what that verse is? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll do what? He'll make your path straight. I can't stress it enough, people, that we need to depend upon our God. You know, we live in this society, in this Western culture where we're educated. We have everything at our fingertips. But I can tell you this, I've witnessed these people on the other side of the globe who have nothing but God and miracles are taking place over there all the time. So, this goes back to my question again. What does dependency look like for us in this Christian walk that we're in, in this highly provisional society? Well, I want to tell you here, let's go to John, if you got your Bibles. Let's look at another example. Let's go to John 15. Verse 1 through 8. There's a whole lot of meat and potatoes in this story. Jesus said, I am the vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he trims and clean so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch 
can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. We're not dealing with just a parable in these verses. This is a parallel between the relationship of a vine and its branches and the relationship we have with Jesus and the Spirit. This relationship is something we don't work towards. It's an accomplished fact. He is the vine, you are the branches. When you said that prayer to the Lord, he grafted you in. As we talked about in our sanctification class this morning, you were adopted into the family. You received an inheritance. You entered into that covenant relationship. This relationship is something that we don't work towards. Like I said, it's an accomplished fact. This is our covenant relationship with him. In fact, in Colossians 3.3, 3, it says, You died, and your life is now hidden in God. Jesus uses language in this story like, Abide in me. This does not indicate independence. This does indicate dependency. It indicates dependency. It indicates a connection, a union with him. I brought a little show and tell in here today. And I did not realize Carlene's charge was going to be on branches and leaves and twigs and things like that. It's interesting how the Holy Spirit just puts things together. Literally five days ago... That was a healthy branch. You can tell it's pretty dried up now. It was green. It was lush. I think I could snap that in half real easy right now. It's dried out. That's a picture of what the Lord's talking about here. That branch cannot survive without the vine. The life of the vine gives life to the branch. I'm telling you, I cut that thing off and literally the next day it was withered. That spoke to me about how often I need to pull the nutrients from my source, from my dependency upon the Holy Spirit. It told me that if I just miss one day of fellowship with him, I was going to start to dry up. In this parable, not really a parable, it's a saying of Jesus. He uses these words, abide in me or depend upon me. Those are key phrases on how the believer is to receive and draw life from the Lord as a branch. Draws from a source, the vine. Yes, we get pruned, and it talks about that in there, but the words prune us. And that's a good thing. But in that word, each one of us are in a process 
you're going from no fruit to fruit to more fruit and to ultimately much fruit. That's the goal. That's where dependency takes us today, folks. Apart from me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. In fact, in Matthew 28, Mike and I talked about this last week. He says, yoke together with me. Come unto me, all you that are trying to do this on your own. Yoke together with me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me partner with you, says the Lord. Teach. I will teach you, he's saying. Learn of me. That's the invitation that he's given us today, folks, is come unto him. Let him be our dependency. As I was praying this morning, the Lord corrected me. Here the last couple weeks, I have been spending a lot of time doing these things on my own. My devotional time was down a little bit. We was on a little bit of a vacation. But he reminded me this morning of that very thing right there. I kind of felt like I was being, I was a little dried up and withered because I was doing things in my own strength. And we can do that. We can do that for only so long. But how many of you have ever tried that? And don't it just kind of leaves a dryness in your mouth? How I just got so refreshed, just basking in His presence this morning. That was the branch of abiding, abiding in the vine, pulling the nutrients from it. That's what we're to do. We're to draw those nutrients from Him. I was praying on how are we going to close the service today. Oh, we all got things going on. But I wanted to encourage you today. Do you, Jackie, did you, did you get that picture that Faye sent about the fruit and the trees? No? There was a picture. There you go. Now that's a picture of somebody abiding in Christ. That's what he wants out of your life, fruit. And that's what will happen in your life as you abide in him. Fruits are simply good work. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works. This story talks about taking you from no fruit to fruit. But there is no fruit if there is no abiding and no dependency. Those very branches right there are depending upon that vine or that trunk. That's its life-giving source. Yes, the Holy Spirit's in it, and the fruit of the Spirit is within us, but you got to walk it out. So I want to ask you today, how dependent on the Lord are you? Where are you at? Now, don't get me wrong. We don't have to, Lord, what clothes do I wear today? Lord, what do I eat for breakfast? He's given you a mind. You, you can make certain decisions, but every day, we have a God that loves us so much that he wants to be intricately involved in everything that we do, every decision that we make. And as we close up today, I just want to invite you. I know I got, I got corrected on this. Where is your dependency today? Are you dependent upon him? Is he your strength, your source? Stand with me, will you please?
Lord, I just want to thank you today. It's so beautiful to see how intricately the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit work together. And I want to thank you, Lord, for challenging us to abide deeper in you, to have our dependency greater upon you, Lord. And I want to ask forgiveness if we've tried to do things in our own strength, myself included, Lord. One of your main desires, God, is that we be fruitful, that the fruit that we bear would be tasted by all those who come in contact with us. So, Lord, I pray today that as we close, the altars are going to be open. I pray, Lord, that we make a fresh commitment of dependency upon you in everything that we do, Lord. God, without the air that we breathe, we're dead. Lord, you've put us in an environment where everything is perfectly balanced here on this planet. And we thank you for that. And sometimes, God, we can get caught up in the liberties that we share. But I thank you, Lord. that how deeply you want to connect with me and my brothers and sisters. I'm just going to open up the altars. Just as the music plays, if you want to come and just make a fresh commitment. I had to do that this morning. It's not a shameful thing to depend upon the one that loves you who died for you, who's partnering with you, who is an ever-present help in a time of need. I want to thank you for the privilege of sharing with you today. Come and let him minister to you. Amen.